Matthew chapter 12. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and they began to pluck ears of corn to eat and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. He said to them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry and those who were with him? How he entered the house of God and ate the bread of the presence, which it was not lawful for him to eat, nor for those who were with him, but only for the priests. Or have you not read in the law how on the Sabbath the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are guiltless? I tell you, something greater than the temple is here. And if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Well, uh, chapter 12 continues the narrative section, chapters 11 and 12. And we have the idea of developing uh, conflict uh, with Jesus, but also the idea of rest. Uh, the end of chapter 12 uh, was uh, the promise. Sorry, the end of chapter 11. Come to Jesus. He will give you rest. And then we have uh, two um, uh, kind of uh, accounts of Jesus in conflict with the Pharisees over the Sabbath. Uh, this one, uh, the beginning of the chapter on uh, the disciples plucking uh, grain and eating them on the Sabbath. And then the next one, the healing of a man with a withered hand in the Sabbath. So it seems to be uh, Jesus gives rest by removing the yoke that the Pharisees uh, have put on the people uh, with their uh, very narrow interpretation of uh, the Sabbath. So this uh, first one. Uh, Jesus answers their accusation that they were breaking the Sabbath by saying, look, look at the Old Testament. Uh, David, in a sense, was able to uh, to break uh, the kind of priestly rule for the good of the people that he was serving. Um, and the, the priests who serve in the temple were, were able to, in a sense, uh, profane the, the Sabbath, to work on the Sabbath and their guiltless. And Jesus is saying that I am greater than David and I'm greater than uh, the temple. I am um as the Son of Man, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. But also there's this note that we've seen throughout uh, the gospel of uh, mercy. Uh, Jesus um, uh, has uh, mercy. And again, Hosea 6, verse 6, we've seen this uh, mentioned before. You know, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Again, the Pharisees' understanding of uh, righteousness is um, very narrow. And Jesus is saying, if, uh, you know, that our understanding of righteousness is going to be uh, wider and include uh, mercy. Uh, the next uh, uh, encounter, again, uh, uh, with the, um, um, uh, it's, it doesn't actually mention uh, Pharisees, but uh, those in the synagogue are over uh, the discussion. The discussion is over whether it's uh, right to uh, heal on the Sabbath. And uh, Jesus is uh, very clear. Look, if you would, um, if you would rescue an animal on the this, this Sabbath, verse 12, how much more value is a man uh, than a sheep? Um, which just as a, as a pause, people uh, like Peter Singer, who kind of espouse uh, a view that, you know, the, uh, human beings are just the same as animals, uh, that, that is clearly ruled out by the Lord Jesus, uh, as well as ruled out by the whole of the Bible. How much more value is a man than a sheep? How much more value is a human being than a sheep? So it's lawful to do good on the Sabbath. So he heals uh, the man. And again, he's showing that his uh, concern is to give life and to have mercy uh, to, to do what the Sabbath pointed out to, to, to give rest. Uh, but the Pharisees, verse 14, uh, so it does mention the Pharisees. So the Pharisees went out and conspired against him how to destroy him. We've, we've seen hints of opposition. You remember back in uh, chapter 9 when Jesus healed um, uh, the, the paralytic or, or actually forgave him. They, they murmured in their hearts against him saying he's blaspheming. Well, here that opposition is crystallized and uh, they are conspiring uh, to destroy him. Uh, that leads Jesus to withdraw. And um, again, he continues to heal, uh, but he doesn't want um, his uh, uh, presence to be made known. And that causes Matthew to reflect on uh, Isaiah uh, 42. And uh, it's interesting, um, you, you know, Isaiah 42, verse 19, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. It's it's a sort of, it, it, in one sense, you know, why... why uh, kind of give such a big uh, Old Testament quotation with just that kind of connection and silence. Well, it's just an opportunity for, for Matthew to, to really show that Jesus is uh, the servant. Uh, he is the one um, with whom uh, the Lord is pleased. Uh, we've seen that at the baptism. Uh, we'll see it in chapter 17 at the transfiguration. 
Uh, he is the spirit anointed uh, servant uh, who is uh, coming to rescue uh, rescue God's people. Um, and then that leads on to more uh, opposition and uh, of a very uh, serious um, type as Jesus kind of heals um, a, a demon possessed man. And that uh, causes the Pharisees, verse 24, to say it is only by Beelzebul, the prince of demons, that this man casts out demons. Jesus says that's uh, ridiculous. If I was on Beelzebul's side, if I was on Satan's side, why would I be uh, attacking his kingdom? Uh, but verse 28, it's this, by the spirit of God that I cast out demons. The kingdom of God has come. Um, he then warns them um, that every sin and blasphemy can be forgiven, but not the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Uh, whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, uh, either in this age or in the age to come. Uh, sometimes people uh, find this uh, very difficult. They, they worry if they've uh, committed the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. A couple of things to say. First of all, e even here, even where the Pharisees uh, have uh, said that this terrible thing about Jesus, he, he warns them. He doesn't sort of say, well, you guys, that, that's it for you. Uh, it's, it's over. No, there's a warning given. And uh, really, if, if you are someone who trusts in the Lord Jesus, then it's impossible for you to have committed the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Pharisees, many of them, we presume, uh, continued the rest of their life in opposition to Jesus. And so uh, that's why they were never forgiven. But if you're a Christian believer, and uh, you trust in Jesus, it's impossible, absolutely, utterly impossible for you to have committed uh, the blasphemy against the, the Holy Spirit. You recognize who Jesus is. He is the spirit anointed uh, savior. You are not doing um, uh, what the um, what the Pharisees are doing here. What they're what what uh, they're being warned against is this settled opposition against Jesus and uh, accounting his uh, uh, the, the work of the spirit in his life as a uh, demonic. And uh, the, the sort of thing that, a, you know, a, a teenager or a young kid might sort of say as a dare, that, that is not in view in this passage. So uh, to do be uh, re reassured of that. Uh, Jesus uh, continues with an explanation for why uh, the uh, uh, Pharisees and others are opposing him. And uh, 33, uh, we, we've got the kind of the idea of fruit and, and uh, you, you know, uh, you know someone by the fruit they produce, particularly uh, how they uh, speak. Verse 34, how can you speak good when you are uh, evil? Um, then he reflects on them when they uh, they ask him for a sign. Again, they're in an evil and adulterous generation. Uh, that's uh, language used of the wilderness generation. So again, we're seeing these parallels uh, with uh, the wilderness uh, generation. And no sign will be given than the sign uh, of Jonah, the, the resurrection. Again, something greater than Jonah is here. Something greater than the temple is here. Jesus is greater. Uh, they will they will get the sign with Jesus um, raised from the dead, greater than Solomon. Um, there's also, um, so they're, they're an evil, evil and adulterous gener generation. They're, they're, uh, they're wicked. And um, verse 43 um uh, 45, uh, you know, spiritually affected. Israel is is affected in, 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 uh, or infected, uh, if you like, with an evil uh, spirit. Uh, the correct response that Jesus wants in uh, in 46 uh, to 50. So again, you can see uh, the end uh, of 11 and the end of 12 sort of uh, reflect on the incorrect and correct response. The correct response is um, uh, to be part of Jesus' family. Uh, not, not to have the physical connection, but verse 50, whoever does the will of my father in heaven uh, is my brother and sister and mother. And that's the same that we saw in chapter seven. It's not those who say, Lord, Lord, and do miracles. It's those who do the will of my father in heaven. And, and uh, that's what it, what, it, uh, what it is to follow Jesus. Uh, look at the two chapters, uh, 11 and 12 in parallel, end of 11, come to Jesus, take his yoke upon him. Chapter 12, do the will of, of my father. That's the pattern of the Christian life. We come to the Lord Jesus, then we're transformed and uh, we do uh, the, will of, uh, the will of God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for Matthew's rich picture of uh, the Lord Jesus and his understanding of why people oppose him. And uh, we pray that we would not be those who oppose, but those who come to him and do the will of, uh, do, do your will. I do pray for anyone who might struggle with this idea of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Do pray for reassurance that if they look to Jesus, uh, they know that they are forgiven. And uh, we thank and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.